We turn now to long lines of traffic in Kyiv as people scramble to get out of the city and head west away from where Russia has started its invasion of the country. And new video from the Ukrainian Border Service this morning shows Russian military vehicles crossing the Ukraine border from Crimea. It's a move that U.S. officials have been anticipating for weeks. Right, and Casey Baylor joins us live now with more details from what happened overnight. Casey. Yeah, well, just hours before the invasion, Ukraine President Zelensky made a plea for peace and even denounced any claim that Ukraine is a threat. And he even made a call to Russian President Vladimir Putin, but that was only met with silence. Now, Russian forces crossed the Ukrainian borders after weeks of claiming they had no plans to invade the country. The invasion into Ukraine brings concerns of an all-out war. Russian state news reported two Kremlin-controlled separatist regions inside Ukraine requested help from Putin and the, and the Russian U military to take on Ukrainian forces. This is right out of the Russian playbook. Uh, to manufacture a provocation uh, as a justification for uh, for invading Ukraine. And President Biden has warned about this attack for weeks. Now the U.S. is following through with their warnings for Putin, which include massive penalties such as full blocking sanctions of Russians, Russia's major banks, along with critical controlled exports of critical uh, technology. We're live in Norfolk. I'm Casey Baylor for 13 News Now. Casey, thanks. And several Virginia lawmakers are reacting to the Russian invasion this morning. We heard from Senator Mark Warner posting this statement on Twitter saying, in part, now that the U.S. and our NATO allies must stand united and resolute against Putin's efforts to renew the Russian empire at the expense of the Ukrainian people. Representative Donald McEachin also taking to Twitter to say the U.S. and our allies stand with Ukraine and condemn Russia's brazen attacks. And Representative Elaine Luria tweeted that the U.S. and our allies must, quote, immediately counter Russia's indefensible aggression, adding that this is the time to stand with Ukraine and unify as a country. Well, before the blasts, Ukraine closed their airspace to all civilian flights. Bethany's following that part of the story. Well, what you're seeing right there is a notice to airmen order. Basically, that's an order telling pilots of civilian aircraft to stay out and they're heeding that warning. This is what Ukraine's airspace looks like right now. This is Kyiv right here and you can see nothing going on. All these flights around, but nothing there in Ukraine. And compare that to the same day this time last week. You see flights, there is air travel going on. And so pilots had to make some quick calls in the cockpit overnight, making the decision to stop. This flight from Warsaw to Kiev actually had to turn around mid flight. You see they're heading this way and then they have to make a full turnaround there. Another flight from Tel Aviv to Toronto had to completely stop to make a sudden leave to avoid flying into Ukrainian airspace. So they made a 180 and then had to go all the way around Ukrainian airspace to get to Toronto. It's a big, busy morning here as we learn more. Ashley.